Hello and welcome to the Digital Dilettante. Today I'm going to run you through how you can go about painting something without necessarily knowing how to paint. We're going to do this through a process known as transfer printing and this is the piece that I've worked on behind me for the last several months. So the important thing to highlight here is that I will always recommend that you go for buying an antique and restoring it. It always feels better to take something that's 18th century, 19th century, 20th century and take something and give it a new lease of life. And that was my first ambition. Take something, take an antique, look for four panels that you can use to apply on this wardrobe. The problem is that there will come a time when you will search far and wide and you cannot find what you're looking for. And there will come a time where you have to take matters into your own hands and you have to build it effectively yourself. So I'm going to run you through in this video how I went about building what I have behind me which is four panels which look like they've been decoratively painted. They look like a very nice fresco style design, Pompeian design and I'm going to run you through the tips, I'm going to run you through what you have to avoid and I'm going to basically cover what applications I used to go from having a completely white, blank, bland wardrobe into what you see behind me. So the first step is, and it sounds like a very obvious point to begin with, but it's to find the image that you want to try and replicate in your design and you can do this in Photoshop if you have the skill set if you don't there are so many incredible resources online that you can leverage here I am on Pinterest I would strongly recommend browsing some of the pages on Pinterest here to see all the old designs some of them are from antique books some of them have almost been lost in time and some of them maybe weren't even implemented so think about how amazing it would be to take a 17th 18th 19th century design that was made for a house or a piece of furniture maybe that design wasn't even implemented and here you can take that design bring it to life so spend some time browsing, spend some time looking at across all these different images and designs and pick something that's vibrant. Pick something that really speaks to what you're looking to implement. So once you have your image and you've chosen your design, the first issue you will be confronted with is that the image typically is not of a good enough quality. Even if you have a high resolution online, even if the image appears to be a high resolution, it needs to be of the top possible quality, especially if you are going to try and transfer this onto anything of any material size. So there are a number of ways to go about resolving this, but I used letsenhance.io. Really simple, really quick, costs a couple of dollars, you upload your image and it effectively redraws your entire image in a really high resolution. So you can see as you zoom into the image, there is no more pixels. It is just really high quality, really nicely done and really smooth. No way are you going to be able to see that that image that you transferred came from a computer or had any pixels or low resolution. This solves your problem. This means that you now have an image that you can work with. Now your item is ready to be sent to the print room. Send it to at least two different vendors just so you can compare how the image looks different. There's no magic formula for what type of paper, what type of ink. Just go, my advice is go for the item that is most vibrant. Get some printed out in A4 first before you get a huge image printed out and make sure that you request for the mirror image to be printed. Next up we need to get our materials. We need to buy some heavy duty wood varnish. Secondly we need to get some Liquitex gloss gel and thirdly some foam brushes for application. So now the real work starts. The first thing that you need to do is to lay down your object on the flat surface to make sure that the glue is not going to run. 
once you've done that put a pretty thick layer of glue across the item and put down the paper on top of that make sure that there are no air bubbles and make sure that the whole surface is pushed flatly against it once that's done let it dry for up to 24 or 48 hours depending on the size of the item and how much glue you've put down and once you're confident the glue has fully dried the next point is take some water and use a foam brush to just gently rub off that paper you need to do this process over and over again possibly five to ten times until such a time that you actually can't see any paper residue left on the item the final step is to decide whether you actually want to go over this image with your own paint. If you've done this accurately, there may not be any need and you can keep it as is. But regardless, the final thing that you need to do is to seal this off with the heavy wood varnish. Go over with a thick layer and that will protect this item for years to come. The final message I want to leave viewers here is that there is really no limit as to what you can achieve using this process. So be bold, be creative and really don't set any boundaries as to what can be done. I would love to see what other people are working on. Do please leave a comment, click on the like button and do please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.